Welcome pong muli sa ating Teo and Coffee, ang pag-aaral ng theology habang nagkakape. Go ahead and grab a cup while we begin with part 4 of our Ecclesiology series. Part 4 na po tayo at ang paksa natin ngayon ay Reform Covenantalism. Last time, we briefly discussed the seven sacraments in Roman Catholicism. Uh, sacraments for them means outward visible sign of inward grace administered by ordained Catholic ministers. And how these sacraments play important role in their order of salvation. Ayan, kapag sila ay nagkakasala ng mortal sin, they fall from grace, and through the sacraments like confession and penance, they go back being saved. Eucharist or your Mass uh, cleanses them of venial sins, purgatory, ganun din, before they get to heaven. And we also learned that the tradition they value most compared Paired with Eastern counterpart, the Orthodox faith. For the Orthodox faith, it's conservatism. But for the Catholic faith, it is the authority in the Rome-based institution, most especially the Bishop of Rome or the Pope as the head of the Church. But in the early 14th century, there have been reformers in the Catholic Church with the likes of the English John Wycliffe, who challenged the Pope's authority for scriptures, and the Czech uh, John Hus, or Hus, or Hus, paano ba pronounce yun, a.k.a. the Goose, was burned at the stake for challenging the authority of the Pope. And this is one of the bad fruits of the union between church and state, when the church used the state's authority to police and punish its members. Ginagamit nila yung authority ng state to apply death penalty sa mga hindi sumasang-ayon sa kanilang paniniwala. Then in 1517, the German monk Martin Luther penned his 95 theses against the indulgences. So comparatively, we can say that for the Protestant churches, the tradition they value most is the doctrine of justification solely by grace through faith. Sabi ni Luther, The doctrine of justification is the article by which the church stands or falls. So para kay Luther, yung naniniwala sa tamang katuroan tungkol sa justification or kapatawaran ng kasalanan or kung paano nagiging righteous ang isang tao sa mata ng Diyos, sila yung kabilang sa true church. Later on, the Swiss reformer John Calvin, ito yung sabi niya, justification is the main hinge on which salvation turns yung sa justification na liligtas ang tao. But when we look at how the Catholics viewed the Reformation, and this is what the Roman Catholic New Advent website or the Catholic Encyclopedia has to say about Luther. So he started to proclaim justification by faith alone, sabi rito, and of course they called it false doctrine, and then he rejected the sacraments, and then he rejected the good works for salvation, Finally, he rejected the authority of the Pope. And by rejecting the authority of the Pope, the sole authority of the Pope, sabi nila, it opened to subjectivism the matters of faith. In other words, Reformation opened religion from autocracy of the Pope to democracy. So in 1519, while debating with Catholic theologian Johann Eck, nakipag-debate siya rito, itong counterpart niya, he tried to associate Luther with the heretic John Hus, the goose. This is what Luther said, a simple layman armed with scripture is to be believed above a pope or a council without it. Neither the church nor the pope can establish articles of faith. This must come from scripture. For the sake of scriptures, we should reject pope and councils. Yung authority para kay Martin Luther, para sa mga reformers, ay hindi dun sa institution, the church, hindi dun sa Pope, yung Bishop of Rome, kundi dun sa scriptures, mismo sa Word of God. The Reformed faith thus rejected the hierarchical authority of the bishops, but instead established the doctrine of the priesthood of all believers based on 1 Peter chapter 2. So you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but chosen and priceless in God's sight. 
You yourselves as living stones are built up as spiritual house to be a holy priesthood and to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Individually, we are living stones and individually, we are priests. And we can offer on our own spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So para kay Luther at sa mga reformers, hindi mo kailangan ng isang priest to be a mediator for you. You are by your own, through faith, you are by your relationship with Jesus as the only mediator can be considered as a priest who can offer spiritual sacrifices to God. To summarize, what is the reform view? Let's see how they view the nature of the church, the relationship of church with Israel, their hermeneutical principles or how they interpret the Bible, eschatology, how they view the end times, their church government or polity, relationship of the church with the state, and the doctrine of salvation. Number one, they also believe in one holy Catholic church. Kaya lang, instead of being unified under an institution or a bishop, but the unity here is in the essential doctrines through the Holy Spirit. They also believe in the apostolic church or succession. Kaya lang, it is determined, yung succession determined largely on the faithful proclamation of the gospel by which the scriptures alone is the final authority and the rest of authorities are subservient to it. Ang pinaka-authority ay scriptures. They do not reject the other authorities. They have a high view of scriptures compared to the other traditions. Also, para sa kanila, the church is the new Israel. They still see one people of God throughout salvation history, calling it the church or the new Israel. And this is based on Galatians 3, which says, Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, And you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So regardless whether you are Jew or Gentile, as long as you have faith, you belong to this one people of God. Kahit pa noong Old Testament period. Kasi yun yung pangako kay Abraham, base sa Galatians 3. Also in Ephesians 3, it says, Which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Kung noon, hindi sila kasama, so one people of God, now they are included in the one people of God. So one people of God pa rin. Number four, with regards to hermeneutics or how they interpret the Bible, through the Reformation, uh, the church began to transition from allegorical interpretation to the plain literal sense. They begin to interpret the Bible uh, and giving more emphasis to the literal sense compared to the Catholic tradition or Orthodox tradition. But still, they are influenced by Christoplatonic dualism. They still see the nature of things in physical and spiritual, elevating the spiritual sense above the physical realm. And because of that, they are still very much influenced by Augustine's amillennialism. But they started to diversify. Now, that is futurist yung view nila about the Great Tribulation, about the Antichrist. And then they transitioned to a historicist view. In this view, they interpret Revelation's Antichrist or the beast in Revelation as being fulfilled by the role of the Pope or the Papacy. And they base their idea of realized eschatology, Christoplatonic ideas, when they interpret, for example, Luke 10. Sabi dito, heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. So they interpret the kingdom of God has come near as already here. So Luke 17, 20-21 Being asked by the Pharisees, the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, 
The kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed, nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. So sa realized eschatology, yung kingdom is spiritually experienced right now. Now here is the summary of their Augustinian a millennial eschatology. So you see, throughout history, there's only one people of God. The church right now is the true Israel. And Jesus is now reigning as king. na fulfill na yun, yung promise niya to reign as king. And the saints are reigning spiritually. And Satan is now bound. Yan po yung summary ng amillennial eschatology. Number seven. Now, as far as their government is concerned, the church government, compared to Catholics, hierarchical bishops, they have Presbyterian form of church government, through which the church is governed by the plurality of elders. Hindi siya nagre-realize sa isang tao lamang, kundi sa maraming elders, a group of elders or ministers. But some churches become more and more democratic in form of congregational polity. Ibig sabihin, yung leaders ng church are elected by the members of the church. Kaya congregational. Sa ibang churches naman, especially malilit na churches, ang leader, yung pastor. Na depende na lang kung autocratic yung leader doon or democratic. Kasi kung autocratic siya, he can act like a pope in their own church. Number eight. Now with regards to church relationship with the state, sacral state pa rin sila from the start. Ibig sabihin, there is a union between church and state and the church still used the authority of the state to penalize and punish sinning or erring members. But it transitioned you know, from a sacral state or society to separation of church and state, lalo na dahil sa United States through their experiments called democracy. Doon sa United States, Nagkaroon ng protection ang freedom of expression at faith. Dahil doon, from sacral society na merong union ng church and state, nagkaroon ng separation of church and state, lalo na nung nanalo ang United States sa kanilang revolution against the King of England. Number nine, as far as salvation is concerned, it follows the other four solas of the Reformation. For them, Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, for the glory of God alone. Therefore, they rejected the teaching of classical Catholics, ng Orthodox, ng Catholics, regeneration by water baptism. And they started to call, the sacraments, they started to call it as ordinances. Out of the seven, two ordinances came to prominence, the water baptism and the communion, or breaking of the bread. Now, what you see on your screen is the different sub-traditions within the reform or Protestant Christianity. Started with Lutheran, nagkaroon ng Presbyterian, Anglican, sa England, ng mga Baptists, right? So, from the Calvinistic teachings on salvation, nagkaroon ng Arminianism, and then nagkaroon ng mga sub-traditions within Arminian tradition, And then so on and so forth, evangelicalism, fundamentalism, liberalism, and Pentecostalism. Tanong, what are the strengths and weaknesses of Reformed Covenantalism? Let's start with the strengths. Number one, with the high view of Scripture, since they believe in sola scriptura, the authority is restored back to God through His Word rather than upon man or fallible institutions. Para sa kanila, ang head of the church is Christ, not man. Pero sa Church of England, ang head of the church ay yung queen. Ito ay base sa Ephesians 1.22-23, which says, And he, referring to God, put all things under his, referring to Christ, feet, and gave him, si Christ, as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. So ang head ay si Jesus, yung mga tao, hindi sila yung head. Okay, number two, strength. The five solas of reformation rejected reliance on the works of the flesh. Hindi sila nagre-realize sa mga sacraments, sa mga mabuting gawa, while returning back to Christocentric doctrine of salvation. So, isa lang ang mediator, si Christ. No? Hindi na kailangan niya ibang mga mediator, yung mga saints, si Mary. There's only one mediator between God and man, it's Jesus Christ. 
Number three strength. Sees only one people of God in history, united by the Holy Spirit, through faith in the essential doctrines. Then, liberty in the non-essentials, and charity in everything else. So, ang unity nila, although marami silang hindi pinagkakaagrihan, ang unity dito ay dun sa essential doctrines of the faith. Example, the gospel, yung trinity, yung justification. Ibig sabihin, the different denominations united in those essential doctrines because of the Holy Spirit. They have liberty or in other non-essential doctrines and beyond that, exercise charity in everything else. Basi ito sa 1 Corinthians 12, sabi dito, For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member but of many. Marami mang iba't ibang denominations, visibly, invisibly through the Holy Spirit, they are all united. Ano naman ang weaknesses ng Reformed Covenantalism or ng Protestantism as a whole? Number one, with the democratization of religion comes private interpretations of scriptures. Ibig sabihin, since ang authority ay yung scripture, kung ang interpretation mo ay iba dun sa interpretation ng isa, magiging dalawa yung interpretation. Lalo na kung hindi ka sumusunod sa certain principle or proper interpretation. At kung hindi kayo nag-agree, they tend to separate. Number two, with the democratization of religion and private interpretation come denominationalism, which sometimes lead to exclusivism or isolationism. So it and tend to disunite the church. Ang masama kasi rito, instead of unifying on the non-essentials, if you major, pinahalagahan mo the non-essentials and call other Christians as non-Christians or heretics because of those lesser important doctrines, then the church becomes disunited. So, sasabi mo, ah, we are the true church. Yun yung tinatawag na exclusivism. You isolate yourself as the pure church because of the non-essential doctrines. Or worse, if you're teaching a doctrine that is contrary to what has been received by the church throughout history. Here's another look at the different Protestant sub-traditions based on Life Magazine 1947. Number three, weakness. Selective emphasis on the doctrine of salvation and personal eschatology tend to neglect importance of social outreach and justice. Yun nga, ang tradition they value most is justification and salvation ng individual or personal eschatology na you will go to heaven by faith You're saved by faith and bibigyan mong pahalaga, Christoplatonic dualism, bibigyan mong pahalaga yung spiritual kesa sa physical. Kasi sa tingin mo yung physical, gugunawi naman yan, tutunawi naman yan, at pupunta ka naman sa langit. By giving importance dun sa spiritual aspect ng iyong pananampalataya, you tend to neglect the importance of social outreach and social justice. Ayan, so... Dito po nagtatapos ang ating part 4 ng Ecclesiology, Reform Covenantalism. Let's give way to question and answer. If you like, you can put your question in the comment section below.